The views and opinions expressed on the following program are not necessarily those of the staff and management of Salem Media of Hawaii. Welcome to Generations Radio, where the focus is on our seniors and their families. We are here each Saturday afternoon from 5 until 6 p.m., bringing you resourceful information with our radio team of professionals in the field of aging. Stay with us for the next one hour as we explore different ways to make life more exciting and meaningful for our extraordinary seniors. Right here on AM 690, The Answer. And now, here is our host and the publisher of Generations Magazine, Percy Ihara. Thank you for joining us here. This is Percy Ihara here every Saturday and Sunday, every weekend with you, bringing you all the new information that affects our families and our seniors and our loved ones. So thank you very much for joining us today, whether you listen to us live on the radio here on AM 690, The Answer, or listen to us on our website, generation808.com. Because, as you guys know, we archive all our shows, and within two weeks, on the show will pop up on our website. And if you want to replay it on your own convenience, on your own computer, or actually in your smartphone, go ahead and do that. So anyway, welcome to the show. As you know, the October uh, magazine is out and about at all the different locations, like the YMCA. Uh, the State Library will be dropping on an, all the libraries statewide in another week. Um, selected times, long safeways around the island. All the KTA stores on the Big Island, over 2,000 copies. are, And that is a great um, resource out there, great venue. So thanks to Derek and, and uh, KTA over there. So anyway, the October issue is out. And if you've looked at the cover, this beautiful cover, which when I first picked it up, I said, wow, these ladies look beautiful and in your gowns and just the colors. And I'm colorblind. And I looked at these colors and I'm going, wow, these guys, this is a great colorful front cover here. And the Fountain of Youth and featuring Faye, Faye Roll Shock, uh, Lori Bachran, and Miss Terry Rainey. And so today uh, we have actually in person in the studio here, Miss uh, Lori Bachran. So welcome to the show, Lori. Well, thank you so much, Percy. It's a joy being here. I'm really honored. It's been quite a, quite a journey. Yeah. Being with you and meeting you for the first time. Well, I mean, <laughs> when I first heard about this Miss Medicare pageant, you know, I like a lot of people like, kind of laugh like, Really? But when I saw your pictures and I saw your story, I was like, wow, this is a great event. And I don't know if you know, but Martha Clopin and Ann Mata, who helped produce the pageant last year, is coming out the second annual Miss Medicare pageant. Um, in the first week of December, actually the pageant was, actually, I'm sorry, it's going to be October 24th. Correct. At the Blaisdell. Mm-hmm. And I believe you have ten, nine or ten contestants this year. I think mm-hmm. there's about seven right seven, now. Eight, seven, mm-hmm. eight. Which is and great. Absolutely. And you were crowned last year uh, the original Medicare. That's right. I'm original. <laughs> well, <laughs> first off, you're beautiful at age 86 and a half. Correct. And uh, when, I, when, I, when I first heard about it, the so Medicare is celebrating, what, their 50 years? Something like that. 50 but, years. You know, the funniest thing was <clears throat> when I was at this, the last meeting, remember they were celebrating Social Security. Oh, Social Security. Remember? Yeah, I, and, I, and all of a sudden it hit me. You know, I'm older than Social Security. <laughs> and that made me it made me laugh. It was so hysterical. I was telling people, you know, I'm older than Social Security. That's right. And they were laughing. But it's I never thought of it in that way. But I said, hey, 86 is getting close to 90, so we have to take care of ourselves, right? Well, Laurie, looking at you, talking to you, I mean, you're, you're 86 is the new 66, I'll tell you. That's you, right. You're you're so healthy. You're so energetic. Your energy, first of all, that's one thing I noticed. You know, in my mortgage business, I work with seniors every day. I talk to families every day, and it's amazing. You know, I try not not, not to guess people's ages anymore because if I saw you, I would have thought you were sixty six or 70, 70, not eighty six. And some people, I think, I look at it, they're sixty, but they actually look like they're eighty. I know, I know. It, it's really, it's really sad. I think about it, and uh, I think of the a- aging population. And I said, you know, when you're thinking that as you age, you looking towards wheelchairs, hip replacements, canes, walkers, and I don't think that's a life to look forward to. And I think, I think we should age well, healthily, um, be involved with a lot of things, a lot of interest in other people. And for me, my interest is people. I love mm. people. And I've been in the health and wellness industry for about 40 years now. 40 years. 40 years. My dad was an MD. 
In fact, he was a missionary doctor. Oh, really? Yeah, he delivered the Dillinghams. You know that name? Uh huh. Uh-huh. Sure. <clears throat> Baldwin's, and he was the first Oriental admitted into the American College of Surgeons. Really? Graduated from Rush Medical way back when. Had no desire to be a doctor. In fact, uh, in those days, you know, agriculture was the thing for right. Orientals, and so his family sent him to Kansas to a, a University of Ag- Agriculture, and he didn't like it. <laughs> so he joined the Chinese traveling baseball team. There was a Chinese traveling baseball team yeah. out of Hawaii? Out of Hawaii, out of, Hawaii or out of Kansas or someplace. We should do a story on that. I know. I'm a he, big baseball guy, as you know. And he ended up in Chicago and uh-huh. became um, uh, one of the uh, four lettermen, University of Chicago. He was track and football and... Uh, Swimming and whatever else, I think there were four lettermen. And the funniest thing is that uh, at that time, coming from Hawaii, they didn't realize where Hawaii was. So they called him Chang from the land of the rising sun. (laughs) Really? (laughs) Really, really. (laughs) And so after the University of Chicago, he asked his friend, what are you going to do? And they said, well, I'm going on to Rush Medical, so why don't you come along? And he did. And so that's how he became a surgeon out of Rush Medical. Wow. And um, actually be- then became an OBGYN, one of the f- foremost OBGYNs here in Hawaii. In Hawaii. Mm-hmm. Wow, great. That's a great story. And you grew up with a family, a big family, small family? <clears throat> no, my mother came from a big family of Makawao, Maui, and she came from a family of 15. Whoa. I know. <laughs> Back then, you know, her oh, her, yeah. her dad came from China, and uh, he, he, he was... Um, he was already literate, and he opened the Makawao store oh, wow. there. And, uh, and so he had a wife in China, and he was going to go back because of the wife, and then he found out that his wife had passed away. So oh. he stayed and married my grandmother, who was part Hawaiian. Stayed and married your grandmother. Uh-huh. So her oh. name was Rebecca Alana, and so that was the Maui connection. And so then a very interesting story, though. My mother at 13 went to California as a nanny to a professor from Stanford University. At 13? At 13, way back when. Can you wow. imagine how... Did they allowed you? didn't have to go to school back then? She only went through the fifth or sixth grade. Wow. And, uh, but the fact is that she was willing to go at that age across the by ocean. By herself? Yeah, by herself with that professor family on the ship, you know, the boat or whatever, the ship Lurleen or wherever it was, Might Mariposa have been back then. And lived in uh, California for five or six years before she came back. Oh, wow. It was a, quite amazing. Boy, so, you, you got these documented stories here? <laughs> well, it's all in, in my head now. I'm writing it down. And then, <clears throat> of course, she met my dad. And uh, he was interning at Queens at that time. Oh. And so that's how they That met. might be something you want to do. I did that for my parents. Mm-hmm. My parents are 85 and 87. Uh-huh. And I documented their lives uh, via video, I hired uh, Jeanette Sergeant Hamill, uh-huh. who's a gerontologist, to videotape mm-hmm. and document my parents' lives. So um, I sat a camera in front of my father. He spoke for like an hour and a half. My mother spoke for about an hour, and we had to edit it down to two hours. Then we had to include pictures we had. Mm-hmm. We were on a SS Lurleen, one of the last voyages mm-hmm. from Hawaii to California in 1968 or 69. Uh-huh. And uh, my father grew up in Hilo. My mother grew up in um, in Maui, uh-huh. where her father worked at the Haleakala Dairy. So you might want to do that and document this because well, it you has know, to be me now because everybody's passed on. But well, you have children, yeah. grandchildren that know technology. That's All true. you do is put in front, put on your best dress, <laughs> and sit in front of your couch like my parents did. Uh-huh. And what we did also was we we got pictures. And we just made it into a digital mm-hmm, copy. Mm-hmm. So tell your kids, your grandkids, they should really do that. I hired somebody professionally because I didn't have the time to do it. But you could do it on your own. Make it like a mm-hmm. six-month project. Mm-hmm. So it's going to take you a couple months just to get the pictures that you want. True. And we yeah. made it into a DVD mm-hmm. and gave it all, to all our families. Wow, that's yeah. that's a great idea. My sister's quite a historian, so she has documented quite a bit and with photos and everything. And uh it's interesting, the background you know, of the families and where they came from and where they settled. Very, very important because, mm-hmm. you know, these stories are great to pass on to your kids, your grandkids, your great-grandkids, and, and on down the way. Because once you're gone, all these memories are gone. All we have is memories. So if you can document with today's technology, it really, really, it is really cool. My mother grew up in Maui. I never knew she grew up with a Japanese first name. Wow. She was named after Shirley Temple. 
Uh, my father grew up on uh, in the Big Island, uh-huh. and he was a senior in the in, at the Forty Six Tsunami. But because his father had a, a truck work that worked, all the Boy Scouts senior mm-hmm. high school had to pick up all the bodies from the beach. He was one of them. He told his story. I'm like, wow. I don't know if I could do that. I, know. I don't know if I could do it today, let alone being a senior in high school. These are dead bodies off the beach, so. It's really, it's really important. I mean, it's cool. Some really cool stories. It is uh, interesting. <clears throat> it is interesting. Like my dad's coach in the uh, University of Chicago was the famous <clears throat> a- uh, Amos Alonzo Stagg. Oh yeah, the I famous basketball name, coach. The famous coach. Oh, very famous. He's I in know. the Hall of Fame. It's, it, right. It, it's so, so it's so interesting, and uh, so. I have to keep remembering this. So I'm, I'm telling you, and I'm going to re- remember <laughs> these names. You know how they come and go, right? Yeah. And you have to remember them. And, Just carry uh, a video. Video. Um, well, actually, if you have a smartphone, smartphones have that. But it's really, really important because you know um, you won't. You won't. You, you, there's so much fantastic stories and mm-hmm. how we grew up. In fact, I did a story in my magazine about my son goes to Asset School by the airport, and they had a they had a Kapuna Day. So they had all the grandparents come in. I happened to go take my, drove my parents down to the school. And he said, okay, all you grandparents, talk, tell your kids about a story that you remember when you grew up in school time. And my son's in the fifth grade. My mother talked about how she had to walk across the dairy to school and how she had to make sure she didn't step on any cow poop walking to school. So my son goes, you had to walk through a pasture of cows? Because, yeah, that's where she lived. She lived on Haleakala Dairy. So you can't make these stories up. And, yeah, if you get a chance, seriously, it, it, it's fantastic. And then when you can show it to your family, boy, the, that's going to create so much interest in your life and what it was mm-hmm. like, you know, mm-hmm. like growing, out with, uh, growing up with a black and white TV versus a color TV or having to walk to school. I don't know if you had to walk to school back in the day. You know, I mean, people, the kids today just can't fathom that. I know, I know. They they don't, and it was interesting. Like my great grandmother um, went back to China, and oh. she actually caught pneumonia. She she wanted she was a swimmer, so she was swimming the Yangtze River and uh, caught pneumonia and wow. passed away. I mean, you know, it's when you think about it, it's my goodness. China was way back when. Yeah, a long time ago. A long time ago. Yeah. So anyway, thank you. We're here with uh, Lauren Bachrin, our centerfold cover cover lady here on our. Fountain of Youth uh, cover for the October November issue, and uh, you guys are part of this Medicare pageant. Correct. And so, are you going to be involved in this year's pageant or next in a couple of weeks, October twenty fourth? Right, we'll probably be giving up our titles and our crowns to a new batch. So <laughs> we'll be ex queens, <laughs> ex queenie weenies, as they call them, you know. And uh, but but it's been fun because. Um, I go way back to 1963 when I won the Mrs. Hawaii. Yeah, when I saw that, I said, <laughs> wow, you were Mrs. Hawaii in 1963, and Medicare didn't start in 1965. That's right. And people say, wow, that's before I was born. <laughs> and it's, it's so interesting, but uh, back in 1963, now remember, this was before the bathing suit Mrs. America. We had a whole week in apartment, and we had to bake apple pies for the judges. We had uh, we that had, was that was your that contest? was my contest. Yes, you uh-huh. had to bake they, apple pies. Yes, they flew my <clears throat> husband and I in. We had to do our hairstyle by ourselves three different ways. So if you had short hair, it would be really difficult, right? Left, right, and up, or something <laughs> like that. <laughs> that was part of the judging. Oh yes, uh huh. Wow. There were no makeup artists there or anything. And then in our refrigerator was a box of unknown ingredients. And when you heard the judges about two doors away, you were supposed to open that box and prepare food for unexpected guests. What? Yes. So when okay, I opened... Because it's, it's from Mrs. 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 Hawaii. Hawaii. So Mrs. Had, as, America. As a, a lot more homemaking. Exactly. Ah. We, had, we had a lot of essays that we had to write in preparation. Now, wait, back up. You said a week? We had a week. A week in an apartment. Yes. You had to spend a week in an apartment mm-hmm. all together? No, no. Our individual apartments. Oh, individual apartments. apartments. So this is what I did. When I heard the um, judges next door, I opened my box, and I said, okay. Everything was the same. Salami, bologna, tomatoes, eggs, anchovies. <laughs> I mean, nothing wonderful. So what I did, I sprayed the room with Wicked Wahini. 
which was the Hawaiian perfume. So when they came into the room, it was... Set the tone. Oh, it was fragrant. So I won. Oh, that would you say that? <laughs> I did. <laughs> uh, just a little trick here and there, you know, does something. <laughs> you never know. That was smart. <laughs> Very smart, because everybody else probably was scrambling eggs, you know. Yeah. And I, We just sprayed, and, and we brought some tea leaves. So we had to use the dishes that were in the apartment. You know, there's nothing fancy. So your husband got to help you? Well, he came to stay with me, Oh, but he had to fly back and forth because he was working with the airlines at that oh. time. But I had him bring some tea leaves from home. So at least I had tea leaves on the platter and Wicked Wahini perfume that did it. Wow. Mm-hmm. And so what was your reign like? What did you have to do during that, during that year? Um, that, that wasn't the first Mrs. Hawaii pageant. That was the third. You know, the first Mrs. Hawaii was Queen Ventura Dowsett. Do you remember that name? She was sponsored by Henry J. Kaiser. And then Part the, of the Dowsett family? Uh, she married a Dowsett, okay. but her, she was a Ventura. And then the second one, I can't remember her name. I should, but uh, she lived in Kaneohe. And then the third. And actually, how I won, it was not a real contest in person. My sister <laughs> entered my name and said, she would be a wonderful Mrs. Hawaii. So, they, <laughs> so they, it was a process of elimination. You had to write a lot of essays and turn it oh. in. And then they would... Before they even meet you. Before they met me. Oh, really? Right. Uh-huh. How interesting. And then they decided if you were intelligent enough, I guess, or interesting uh, enough. Well, a good housemaker. Yeah, a housemaker. And then, of course, I, was, I had six children. You had six children? Six children by wow. the time it was Mrs. Hawaii, yes. Wow. Six children, 33 years old, and six kids. So, anyway. <laughs> so, I had a lot to share about, you know, family and, and family. homemaking yeah, and sure. how to raise kids and et cetera, et cetera. And uh, so, that was kind of the background. And then it was eliminated down again, down to the last three. And then the newspaper called me and said, you won. The newspaper? <laughs> Newspaper got the word. Uh, the advertiser, one of the newspapers, called and said, "You have won the Mrs. Hawaii title." So that's how I heard. Was was a paper involved at all? Or did it put- no? They they. I guess they were writing back and forth, and they were doing. They were printing the different stories of the of the potential winners, mm-hmm. and so they had you know followed up, followed up, followed up, and then. They got the winner, and then that's how I found out. Wow. So during your year of rain, what kind of activities were you Well, I did with? a lot of um, uh, talks, you know, with the, uh, with the university, and uh, there were different, different uh, groups that wanted me to talk to them. And so I did a lot of talking and, and different things like that, and eventually went into the wellness business and had my own health and nutrition center. Oh, really? Uh-huh. Called Living Foods in Kaneohe, the one of the first back in 1978 before, wow. before health was even, you know, interest, people yeah. weren't interested in health. No. And so that's how uh, that wellness uh, in my background developed right. back way back then. So raising kids and being Mrs. Hawaii, what was, that must have been a crazy, hectic time for you. Well, it's a lot of fun, actually, because, you know, when you have six children, you have to be a little bit more organized. Oh, my mom had, <laughs> we, I'm, I'm the second youngest of six. Oh, you're too, see? I'm from a family of six <laughs> as well. So, yeah, organized, oh, yeah, oh, my oh, mom was, right. was really And organized. we had three boys and three girls. We had three boys, three girls, too. See? Well, how about that? <laughs> and we alternated. How about that? We did boy, girl, boy, girl, girl, boy. Oh, really? How, yeah. Boy, you're like the perfect <laughs> specimen here. Exactly. You just pop them out. I want a boy, I want a girl. I want a boy, I want a girl. Well, you know what my husband always said? He said, it's the chef and the recipe. Oh, very good. Yes. Very good. <laughs> yes. Well, no, we had my oldest son, who's a, my, my older brother, the senator, and three girls. Uh-huh. And my, my dad, I said, Let's have, I want to have a boy. And then I'll came myself and my younger brother. Mm-hmm. Yeah. See, but yeah, we you organize it. You have to be organized. Yes, you have to, and actually, uh, you know, one of the the things we did. The children always remember this: that uh, whenever we're driving the car, back then, no seat, there were no seat belts and no car seats. Right. You know, so we could all fit in a car. Otherwise, we'd have to have a bigger van. Right, and uh, so there was no arguments to take place. So what we did. <clears throat> We always sang. My husband and I met together singing the Mikado together in a college production. So oh, really? that's how we met in New York City. Because I was in college in New York, near Shell, and he was in Iona. And so we grew up singing. He was, a, he was actually a song and dance man. He, he was in the era of Bob Fosse. Really? And he was a tap dancer, fabulous tap dancer, but he felt that 
he couldn't compete in that stage, so he went into PR. Sure. But um, so we trained our children to sing, and when they were growing up. From the time they were about 3 to 5, 5 to 15 in that age group. We sang for five years at Cocoa Palms in Kauai. Oh, really? We were the Christmas show. Wow. Mm-hmm. Your whole family, all the family, kids? Family, all the kids, right? Wow. Uh, so they had you guys to must sing. be really they good. Had, That's professional. <laughs> they had to sing for their supper. No, <laughs> actually, yes, they invited us for five years. So we were with uh, Gus Gus Lander and Grace Busher okay. and the Cocoa Palms Hawaii for five years. And what as were you they guys were growing called? up. The background singers, I guess. Oh. <laughs> yeah, so we were, and Bill was the MC, and, you know, it was a family affair back then. So it was fun, and the kids got to have a vacation for five years. You know, who would, how can you go on vacation with oh, why, especially six kids? Back in those days. Yeah, well, we, we, I'm from a family of six, and my father's in the military. Mm-hmm. So obviously in the military, you got to travel. And so I was actually born in Germany, and um, when we left, we Came back to Hawaii, and when we left in 69 and 68 to go to the mainland, only five of us kids went. But, you know, in the car, it goes by age. The oldest in the front, youngest one in the back. So me and my younger brother always, back then the country squire was the big, big car back in the 60s. We had a rambler. We had the one with the back seat facing out, you know. Yeah, so we yeah. had the three here and the three back. Yeah. And, yeah so. We did that too. Uh, but those are those are great times. I mean, like I said, that documentary I did on my family's my parents' lives. We had pictures from back in the sixties and mm-hmm. eight millimeter, going tick 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 tick, you know. Mm-hmm. And mm-hmm. we actually converted it to DVD. Mm-hmm. And uh, yeah, I mean, back in those days, it was much simpler living. Right. And I don't know about you and your mm-hmm. husband, but my father, being military, was pretty strict. Right. So. You didn't argue a whole lot. If you did, you didn't argue very long, that's for sure. I know. I know. Well, Bill was in the um, uh, PR business. He was with three airlines at Pan American Days. You know, they, they brought in all the celebrities. So we were we knew all of the uh, movie stars, you know, from Gary Cooper down to uh, John Wayne and, and uh, yeah, wow. some very famous people. And Bill Holden was one of our, one of our best friends, and so really? when when he and his wife artists were in town, we had them out to dinner, and so the Zudemeisters, you know the name back then, uh, very famous hula uh, hula dancers right. in Kaneohe, so we had them as entertainment <clears throat> and everything. So, here, but you know back then we just thought they were like ordinary people. You didn't really consider movie stars. Yeah, mm-hmm. we, we knew they were movie stars, but you know it was like not out of out of the ordinary. But uh, I always remember uh, us meeting Bill uh, Peter Townsend. Do you know that name? And he had just come from actor? England. No, he was the one that could not marry Princess Margaret. Oh. And so he was here after he was told that he could not um, marry Princess Margaret. And we sat there and had coffee together and kind of cried together. But we were also uh, together when Bill Holden won the Bridge Over the River Kwai. And so we have had some exciting times in our lives, and the kids grew up with with all of this and really uh, took it all in stride and never thought anything was different about their lives. Wow. What right. are, so did the kids, um, uh, did, did the kids uh, get to meet them and, and oh, still yes, remember uh-huh. those days? Right, right. Herb Alpert, you know, and the Sergio Mendez. Yep. Wow. All of that. All. So Bill did a lot of the uh, PR for the big groups that came in, you know. Creators Clear Water, I think. And, Creators Clear Water. Uh, yeah, all of those big, big groups. Really? Uh-huh. So they got to see a, a lot of that. So did they come to your house and play music? No, they didn't. But you know who did? Who? You remember Hal Akuhead Lewis? Yeah. Yeah. He was one of our, <laughs> my husband's poker buddies. So oh. he used to come. And, and uh, so we were good friends with them. And, and uh, the old, old timers, um, Bill Murata, who was uh, one of the old music. Magic, uh, magicians, Japanese oh. mag- magicians, a lot way back when. So it was fun, but they 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 were at the house a lot. And so the kids, you know, they they said we were always serving and washing dishes. <laughs> <laughs> Probably true. Probably true. <laughs> Probably wow. true. So family, you have six kids, three boys, three girls. Mm-hmm. How many grandchildren do you have? We had ten grandchildren, and we have ha- now we have fifteen great. More great grandchildren than your grand great grands are fifteen now. Wow. Mm-hmm. And more to come, I'm sure. I'm sure, yeah. <laughs> My parents have um, uh, 14 grandchildren and um, uh, I think six or seven 
seven or eight great grandchildren. Uh, we'll have forty by the end of the end of this uh, by the early part of next year. Forty, and so what's cool about what we do is we we get together every year for a family reunion. That's great. So my parents pay for everything: hotel, airfare, food. They coming from all over. Um, luckily, only one from one family from Tacoma. Ah. Everybody else lives on this island. Ah, I see. So. Last year, we were at um, all over the place. Mm-hmm. We had different places we're staying at. My sister has timeshares. So next year, we're going to go to uh, the North Shore, rent a huge, huge uh, beach house. How fun. And two years ago, we were in Seattle for my uh, niece's wedding. So we, every uh, few years, we go to the mainland where my sister folks live. We've been to Kauai. We've been to Maui. So yeah, we've been to where my father grew up in Hilo. Mm-hmm. Um, so we try to get everybody together and keep the family and, you know, talk, tell stories. You know, all the grandkids want to know how I grew up. Like my son wants to grow how, how I grew up or, or what my, my, his uncle and aunties like. And, you know, so it's interesting. We spent all the time talking story about back in the day. Mm-hmm. You know, when we traveled a lot, when we rode by, we went by car most of everywhere in the mainland when we traveled and we always played Paiute. Oh. <clears throat> that was our thing. We played Paiute wherever we went and we would, you know, Paiute's old Hawaiian poker game. Mm-hmm. And I, you probably, Leah, our engineer here, you probably don't know what that is, right? <clears throat> that was back in the day. Like today, they play Pepito and all the seven card that Texas hold them. Back in the day, it was Paiute. You know, so we, yeah, played, we played a lot. played a lot of poker at our house, too. The yeah. kids grew in poker. But like our oldest son and his wife live in Shanghai. A do- our oldest daughter commutes between Singapore and Oregon. Wow. Son lives in Virginia. Another one in Florida. All and, over the place. And only two in the islands, right. Only two? Mm-hmm. So when you guys get together, boy, yes, that's pretty hard to... Hard to bring them together. Yeah. Yeah, mm-hmm. yeah for us, luckily, like I said, we only have one family in, in, in Tacoma, Washington. So it's been, it's been great fun. But yeah, coordination. And, you know, when you get that many people together, somebody's arguing with somebody about something, you know. It's like, it's great to get together, but, you know, we're always, somebody's always late. Just bring food. Yeah, <laughs> food, what, we, food. what we organize where uh, every family has to cook breakfast, lunch, or dinner. So to coordinate that, oh, my God. And, and if we go out, usually go out dinner once during that four or five-day period. So picking their restaurant, trying to get everybody, trying to find a table for 35, <laughs> 30. We went to, up to uh, Haleakala came down the mountain for breakfast. We couldn't find any place to eat breakfast at because no place sat, sat more than 20 up in Makawa. Wow. You know, uh-huh. so we, had went, we went all different places. It was pretty fun. But uh-huh. um, so growing up, I mean, raising six kids, it mm-hmm. must have been such a hectic time. And you still had time well, for a well, business? Well, <clears throat> yes. Well, the, the, uh, the, everybody asked me, how did you do it? And I said, I think I lived in a fog. <laughs> <laughs> And, but I, you know, after um, after the Mrs. Uh, Mrs. Hawaii pageant, I wrote a couple of cookbooks. So I have a couple of cookbooks. Oh, really? Uh huh. And um, of course, with Living Foods, we developed recipes, and we did a lot of fun things. And then I, I traveled quite a bit in uh, in Asia, teaching health and wellness and detoxification and all of that. And then I ran a salon for a while. In where China? I, no, at here. Here. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Oh, well, yeah. you're like the uh, Renaissance woman. <laughs> I the women's one women, I Renaissance know. woman. Yeah, I did facials. I did body care. I did all kinds of things. Worked with pageants and um, ran a ran a, um, a scholarship pageant for five years myself what, what, with our kids. We we did the whole pageant. Yeah, you know, because they're all for? talent. It was it was a precursor to the Miss America. It was the Miss uh, America teenage scholarship pageant. So based on scholarships. So. Uh, so the girls would would come. There were there was no bathing suit at all. It was you know it was um, casual wear and evening wear, but a lot had to do with their scholastic uh, grades before they could become part of the. Uh, and program. when they won, they got scholarship money. They got yes, we had scholarship money. We had about seventy eight thousand dollars worth of scholarship wow. money that we gave out. And the national pageant was in Nashville, Tennessee. So I took two winners. So for five years, we did that as a family. So. No. Wow, busy lady! But I know, so I haven't, haven't retired down, yet. You I haven't know, down yet at all? Not yet. Now oh. I'm, I'm still doing health and wellness, and well, I love it. You're mm-hmm. definitely, definitely uh, are a really great role model, like a lot of our fam- parents are. And so, anyway, we're here with Laura, Lori uh, Bachman from our Medicare cover story, and featuring her, uh, Faye Rawls Shock, and Terry Rainey. Um, and we're going to come back, and we're going to in the second half, uh, you know, Laurie, We want to talk about what you're doing now. 
and your health and wellness and how you view life as well. Okay. Thank you very much. We'll be right back. Generations Radio. If you have any questions or want to be part of our discussion, give us a call at 296 5467. That's 296 5467. This is Generations Radio on AM 690 The Answer. Moon Physical Therapy is here to help you back to recovery. Moon Physical Therapy is located on Ward Avenue across from Sports Authority. Physician prescribed for motor vehicle accidents, workman's comp, or that body pain that comes from rushing to play without warming up. Also event cardiopulmonary rehabilitation with our one-on-one patient care. Moon's Aqua Therapy heated endless pool allows for low impact exercise with less pain on land. We will give you the right exercises to get you back to health. Ask your doctor to prescribe Moon Physical Therapy. Moon Physical Therapy. We achieve results. Aloha. This is Martha Clopin. And Al Harrington. Choosing the right Medicare plan not only saves you money, it also helps you avoid headaches and heartaches down the road. We want to remind everyone to listen to a Medicare moment with Martha. Sundays from 9.30 a.m. to 10 a.m. as we help answer important questions on Medicare so you can stay healthy, wealthy, and wise all year long. Call me at 543-2073. 543-2073. I was an addict from the age of 13. I finally decided it was time for a change. I walked into the Salvation Army Adult Rehabilitation Center, and that got me ready for the real world. Now, I choose to be guided by Jesus Christ, and today, I'm building a powerful and promising future, free from drugs and alcohol. Please shop at the Salvation Army Family Stores. With our discounted sales, your support through your purchase helps men live a clean, sober, and productive life. Got Vegas on your mind? Get Vacations Hawaii on the line. Vacations Hawaii offers weekly four- and five-night Honolulu to Vegas packages, which include three meals daily from six ninety nine. dollars Stay at Hawaii's favorite casinos, California, Fremont, Main Street Station, and Orleans Hotel. Vacations Hawaii will get you there in comfort on deluxe wide-body 767 planes with complimentary in-flight hot meal service. Vacations Hawaii's frequent flyer program gives you future travel discounts and credits. So if you're ready to win big, call Vacations Hawaii at 591-4777 or visit pointvacationshawaii.com. Hi's Steakhouse Waikiki, a special place to celebrate your next special occasion. Dine on High's succulent Alaskan king crab, fresh oysters Rockefeller, and signature Kiave seared roast rack of lamb, amongst other favorites. Marvel at tableside creations like the classic Caesar salad and signature desserts. For reservations, call 922-5555. Online at highswaikiki.com. Celebrate your next special occasion at High's Steakhouse Waikiki. Proper dress required. Today, more than ever, we local people are living longer than any other state in the union with more seniors, baby boomers, and caregivers. Generations Radio promotes the importance to be proactive as we all age. The radio team will focus on issues facing our seniors and their families, finding resources to navigate healthy aging along with financial, legal, and caregiving information. So join Percy E. Howard from 5 until 6 each Saturday, right here on AM 690 The Answer. Focusing on the issues facing our seniors and their families today. Here's our Generations Radio host, Percy Ihara. Welcome back to Generations Radio. I am here with our cover lady, Miss Lori Bachran. And our October issue is out, as I mentioned earlier. Uh, you can go online to our Generations 808 website or select a tong, long Safeway and Times in your community. All the state libraries, uh, the YMCA's, big city diners, um, Vacations Hawaii, by the way. And we will be doing a cover story on Vacations Hawaii again later next year, in 2016. Um, but uh, we're talking about Laurie Bachran. And Laurie, you're, you're an exercise. Uh, you work out five, four days a week at the mall there in Windward Mall. Right. And uh, now you had mentioned it's unique. It's not Tai Chi. It's not yoga. It's No, it's called Luk Tung Ken. Luk 
Tung Kim. Uh huh. And it actually was um, devised by a Chinese um, acupuncturist back way back in China. Oh wow! And it's been around for a long time. I'm people at the mall have been doing it for over twenty years. And it's it's really good. It's for balance, flexibility, few strength moves, and um, it just keeps you going. You know, it um, it's it's really good. It helps your heart. It's not strenuous. You're supposed to jog in between, but we don't. Oh, really? Yeah, a little bit. And it's at a Windward Mall. Windward Mall Center Court, eight in the morning to about uh, ten of nine. Tuesday through Friday. 50 minutes. Mm-hmm, 50 minutes. Another thing that's really quite exciting that's on in the Windward side is the Key Project. Have you heard of Key Project? No. Uh, they have a free breakfast for the Kupunas mm-hmm. on Wednesdays and Fridays from 8 in the morning. And they train seniors who want to be in the culinary field. When is that? Uh, and where is that at? It's, it's across from, mm, it's near the hygienic store. It's uh, oh. just at the end of the Kahalu, right there. Okay. Yeah, it's really great. There's a big pavilion there. and they Oh, do, yeah, yeah. It's on the right side. Exactly. On the ocean side. <clears throat> it's across, across from, street. yeah, across the from street hygienic. from the, right. By the way, the fish pond there, at there, the, the uh, Kahalu fish pond, my dad used to own it. Really? Yes, I remember. We used to haul mullet and crabs, mowing crabs and everything there when uh, when I was growing up. Wow. So we <laughs> So we would take my mother would take the fish to Chinatown, but they had great mullet there because there is a fresh water uh, there from the from the mountains goes right into the bottom of that fish pond. So the fish is they're not kind of muddy tasting or anything. They're fresh like freshwater fish mullet, mm-hmm. and it was great. So we had that. Pond. I know the area. My parents live at uh, Ahoy Manu. Oh which yes, is just past mm-hmm. Valley Temples. Exactly. So I know exactly. the area very well. So. Um, so when you when you're working out, you work out four days a week. That's four great days for a you. week, but it's mild. It's not. Well, it's, uh, but I, I mean, you when know, you get older, you don't want anything too strenuous. That's right. And I try to walk in between, find time to do that. But um, that's about the extent of my exercise. I guess. But you've been in health and wellness, so I know before the show, you want. I know our Lee, our engineer, was looking all like tired there, so she gave us a packet <laughs> of uh, this Zing. Uh, product here so yes. when it comes to health and wellness what are some of the important things that our seniors can do well i think uh one of the main things is is um keeping your attitude positive right and uh and also uh, because i find if you there's negativity in your life you know it's depressing and you you don't want to fall into stress. depression and the yep. stress and actually, um, what I love about uh, what I'm doing is that, as I mentioned before, I've been in, in the wellness field for about 40 years, and I used to do a lot of teaching and seminars all over Asia, you know, China, Malaysia, Taiwan, Singapore, just teaching people about body cleansing and detoxification because there's so many toxins in the air now, the food we eat, the water we drink, the, you know, everything around us, the air we breathe is toxic. And so our bodies become filled with what we call free radicals. And so what you want to do is get rid of that by taking in antioxidants. So about six years ago, I came across a company that has everything that I've always wanted for the last 40 years. And everything is natural in it. It's uh, They have put together what we call nutritional science. So all the things blend together well so that your body can assimilate what you're taking in. Mm -hmm. So often we take a lot of different bottles of everything. People go to Costco or GNC and they pick up a bottle of calcium, magnesium, potassium. They get all these bottles, 20 bottles, and they're taking it. But it doesn't mean that it is blended together in the correct amount to benefit your body. Yeah, Same with medication. When when people... Dr. Prescribed medicines, you know, I know people on average they take three to five in the 80s. And you said you don't take any medication. No medication. No wow, high blood pressure, no cholesterol, no triglycerides, no diabetes, wow. no nothing. Great but, for you. but it's because of the kind of nutrition that I'm taking in through supplementation because we can't get it from the food, you know. Well, a couple of weeks ago, if you want to go to our website, I believe, uh, when was it, Leah? Was it the last week in September or October, first week of October, we did the show about Kangen water. Mm-hmm. Are you familiar with Kangen mm-hmm. water? Yes. That's the ionized machine yes. from Japan. And, and that that ionization and a perfect pH balance creates a lot of um, antioxidant properties mm-hmm. that really helps to uh, stave off all those free radicals. Exactly. And so I just exactly. got into that. But That's I like your, your vitamins and antioxidants. Yeah, it's really important. Mm-hmm. But drinking water is really so important because right. if you, your body just no, normally, 
naturally as you get older, it hydrates. Right. It doesn't hydrate as well. Mm -hmm. And people don't like to drink water when you get older. No, they don't. What's so exciting about this company that I represent is that their energy drink just came in top five out of all the thousands that were submitted, not by people, but suppliers and manufacturers because of the results that they've had with it. And also the weight loss kit, again, top five, which is amazing because there's so many out there in the marketplace, you don't know which to get and what is going to work. And when you get the uh, suppliers and manufacturers who actually go into the product, see how it works, and see the results, and they vote it in. And because otherwise, if you put it in the public, you know, everybody can punch a number, right? And right, and right, it doesn't right. work. But this is from the actual suppliers and manufacturers themselves. So it's very exciting to have this type of uh, recognition. But you still need to watch your diet, right? Yes, you do. And you watch the sugars, right? Everybody loves sugar. I have Malasada wagons out there in the corner all oh, the time. I, I heard I the know. rumor that somebody's... Some of the famous, the one that has the best French fries, they put a little sugar in their recipe they for do. French fries. Well, you you know the uh, the buns, the <clears throat> buns in McDonald's yeah. and all, all have sugar in it. Oh, that's no makes, That's why you want to eat it. Oh, that's why it tastes so good. That's right. Yeah, those French fries are really good. Uh huh. You know, they're my favorite. I'll, I'll order a salad sometime and have a French uh, French fry back. You know. <laughs> yeah. But uh, you're right. Sugar. I just got my physical. I just went to my physical. Uh, uh, Wednesday, uh, let's say Thursday, Tuesday, and uh, I'm actually lower this year than last mm-hmm. year, except for my triglycerides, the sugar. Uh huh. Well, you know that every extra pound you're carrying, you know, so many blood vessels have to work that much harder to get through to your heart and keep it beating well. So, you really want to watch the weight, and uh, unfortunately, people are find that the easier way it is just to take a pill. Yeah. Rather than to do something positive, and that's the sad part. Yeah, I mean, I, well, I had two shoulder surgeries in the last two years, and um, my last surgery, when I went to get ready, for, the nurse was prepping me for surgery, and she goes, "Okay, Mister Yahara, what kind of medications are you taking?" I said, "Well, I take vitamin C, glucosamine, mm-hmm. and antioxidant." She goes, "No, no, um, what kind of um, medication?" I said, "What are you talking about? Are you, are you taking anything for cholesterol, high blood pressure?" She goes, "No," I said. Why did you ask me that? She goes, oh, anybody over 50 is normal. And I didn't know that. Mm-hmm. So I actually, what I do now is I ask my friends, are you on medication? I'm shocked how many of my friends are on medication. Absolutely. Totally shocked. Mm-hmm. Like in the 40s, I have two, three of my friends get recurring gout in the 40s. That's not good. That is so bad. That is so bad. And, and really, um, obesity has become rampant. Yeah. you know, all over the world. And in Hawaii itself, we, we have a lot of that. And uh, and it, it, it kind of grieves me, you know, when I see this because it's really not necessary. But uh, and, and right now, you know, so many of the, um, the clinics are all, they're all talking about uh, bariatric surgery. Oh, I know. I know. And gastric bypass. Bypass. I know. I, one woman that I know, um, she... She had bariatric surgery, and she went into three near-death comas during that time. And actually, Mayo Clinic told her that they had to reverse it or she would die. So she did. So immediately, of course, after they reversed it, she put on 100 pounds. (laughs) And she she came away with three gallon-sized bags of medication, pills, that she had to take during that 20 years that she was suffering. But she suffered the whole time. Yeah, we're trying to get people to understand to be proactive. Maybe we should, maybe we should write. We should have you write an article about how to stay healthy. Okay. Um, not really to sell vitamins, but it's important mm-hmm. to exactly make sure to, to, to find to get some the right type of yeah exactly. Right. Mm-hmm. Um, try and get off medication. With so many doctors, is this normal? Give mm-hmm. medication. Mm-hmm. That's the best way to solve it. Uh, and and actually, I, I you know we had Doctor Shintani on our cover. You know Doctor mm-hmm. Shintani. Is? Yes. And he's actually going to start writing for the magazine in December. We're going to have Excellent. him on. Mm-hmm. He has his own television show as well, mm-hmm. uh, radio show rather. Mm-hmm. But he's going to start writing for, for regular, regularly on about anti-aging. Excellent. It's really important. Really it important. really is. It really is. And uh, you know, people think, oh, I'm eating healthy. You know, I'm, I'm eating greens. I'm eating this. Uh, or <clears throat> they're juicing carrot juice. Now, you know for one glass of carrot juice, you know how much sugar is in there? A lot. A lot. 
and it's not good. No. But people are convinced that if they juice carrot juice, they're going to be healthy. And yeah. so there's so many misconceptions on how to stay healthy. And yeah. Well, well uh, Dr. Shitani mentioned about how if you put too much fruit in your smoothie, exactly. when you blend that fruit up, it converts it to sugar. Mm-hmm. So now I tell my wife, make sure now you don't put too much fruits and in, in, in oranges and apples and everything inside there. Yeah. So, but you had mentioned about um, detox. Yes. So I like that word. I did some study on that. I've done a couple of small detox. I didn't last more than a day and a half. I mm-hmm. couldn't. Mm-hmm. You know, there's all kinds where you can fast or you can take that that natural one where you do water and lime or something like that. Have you heard about that one? Um, there's one where you take uh, just water, distilled water, uh, cayenne, lemon juice, and cayenne, cayenne pepper. pepper. It's a natural cleanse. But that's not really good for the body. No, it, that and uh, that's a ten day one that has, has put some people in very uh, stress oh, stressful yeah. situation. I know when I, uh, that was still going on when I had my health food store back in 1978, and I actually had someone literally almost crawl into our in nutrition center because she had been on this for ten days, yeah. and uh, she was deathly ill. And uh, you can't you can't do that. The detoxification programs that I used to do way back when, and I did over three hundred myself, and uh, uh, I would do about three a year, it's only three days, but it had supporting nutritional capsules with it. You would do the distilled water and the pure fresh lemon juice, and uh, and the cayenne pepper was was a combination with other herbs in it. It mm-hmm. wasn't just straight cayenne pepper. And we would do pure maple syrup, and we would not do the A variety. We would try and do the C, which mm-hmm. is, has a lot of more vitamins and minerals. But it was only for three days, and it's, it's amazing what that does because your body doesn't starve in that days. You don't get ketosis. You don't get the kidneys, you know, overload and all of that mm-hmm. type of thing. So we, we talked about a lot about that t- taught a lot of classes on that so you do you still detox yourself i do mm-hmm. but i don't do it as often as i did i used to do about three or four years this i'll do maybe once a year three day cleanse. so in your own words in your experiences what really happens when you detox well your body has a chance to rest it's a resting time where you're not constantly feeding it things that it has to digest and and you know and kind of get your put put all these different things in your body. So what this does, it goes through your body and starts to cleanse and, and starts to remove some of the hardened plaque on the walls of the colon. And a lot of times people have diverticulitis because of the amount of stuff in the colon that has nowhere to go. So it, it pooches out the colon walls and forms these pockets and puts puts these uh, these particles of undigested food in there. And that, that's what causes the diverticulitis. And so what it does, it cleanses these pockets out and starts to remove the, the plaque off the walls of the colon and starts a natural process. See, what happens is that um, when the walls of the colon get really packed, it becomes like a, a PVC pipe, smooth. So it doesn't have the peristalsis action for it to move waste through the body. And because your colon is five feet long or yeah, more, you can imagine how much stuff is in there. And people say, oh, but, you know, I have regular bowel movements. I said, yes, but you may be eliminating 12 inches, but 12 inches is only 12 inches that have been put in and 12 inches have come out, you know, but the yeah. rest is all still in there. So so it's a process of them understanding that there is a movement that has to be going on in the body. And it's like a vacuum cleaner hose that moves in and out. Right. I call it this way. And so you have to have that 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 movement, the peristaltic move, movement to get the waste through the body. But because it's so impacted, it doesn't happen. And that's what, that's what causes the, the body to get very toxic. But I know some doctors don't really believe in detox. Maybe that's true because they maybe have... But you know how many, you know how many doctors are overweight? How many oh. nurses are <coughs> overweight? Have you gone there through the clinic and seen <laughs> yeah. them? No, 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 I know. I know. Carrying 50... 60 pounds. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. I know some, I know, I know some vegetarians that are overweight. Because, I, how can that be? Because <clears throat> they eat sugar. Oh. They'll eat vegetables, but you'll see on the dessert plate, loaded. Because I did Dr. Shintani's 10-day program, and I was probably one of the heavier people, but 
there are some people heavier than me and people younger and older than me. But so most of the people, I would say 80% of people were skinnier than me. Mm-hmm. And we went around the room, we had like 50 in my class, and I was shocked how many people had health issues. So skinny does not mean you're healthy. That's correct. That's correct. I was totally shocked. Like, mm-hmm. wow, I, I'm like one of the bigger people here mm-hmm. meeting. Like, but all these people had all these other issues. I think, like, wow, that don't, I'm, I, I think I was the only one that did not take any kind of medication. Isn't that interesting? What was, um, what was so thrilling to me just this week, I had someone start on the program. And so she just wrote to me and she says, I, I did something about I wasn't supposed to do it. I thought, "Uh uh-oh, what was that? (laughs) So so she started. In two days, she she dropped six and a half pounds. Wow. Just by the process of the nutrition that was taken in, the body starting to burn fat and building lean muscle. But six pounds came off in two days without anything unusual because she's eating. But she's taking a lot to take, but lot. she's taking the nutrition, but eating what we what we tell her to eat the protein the you know the grains whatever. She says, "I am so amazed! I cannot believe this." I said, "Well, the body is starting to work properly, and that's what happens. That's, that's what's what so it exciting when you working properly. So when you have the right things to do, the right ingredients, and you you do it the right way, it works. That's yeah, what's so, so exciting. Important. Isn't that so important? And what's the benefits? You're healthier, you have more energy, you can think clearly, you probably have less stress. And it really comes down, you probably are just smiling, happy, happier in it. That's totally. part of life. I mean, we live such short lives, we don't know what's going to happen. We don't live perfect lives. And I tell my clients, the seniors, that you live today. And that's mm-hmm. what I love about you know three of you on our cover, mm-hmm. is that you're really perfect examples of how to live life. Mm-hmm. And you continue to do that. But I, I'm really happy to hear that you're not on any medication. Um, and I know Terry, you've known Terry for many years. Yes, she's like yes. an exercise guru now, huh? Yeah, she's in totally fitness shape, right? <laughs> I mean, but you remember, she's 20 years younger. <laughs> That's <laughs> she can, true. She can go and do all the push ups she wants, you know? <laughs> said, Terry, true. you could do your 200 push ups, but don't count me in. <laughs> yeah, yeah, she is. She's great. I, she, I was hoping to, we'll try and get her on our show later on, but, um, it's so wonderful to see you, and I'm glad we got pictures of your family in here. Thank you, yes. I mean, that's what I love to see. God, mm-hmm. And this is a picture of your great-grandchildren? Great-grands, right. Wow, mm-hmm. beautiful kids. Mm-hmm. I mean, just... We hit the 40, 40 people mark already now. Yeah, I know, but you said 10 and 10 and... 10, 15, 15 right? and 6, yeah. And yeah. So, yeah, we're only at 14 and 8, yeah. <laughs> but... uh Thank you so much. Uh, You're Laura. welcome, it Pharisee. It's I been want a to give joy. You more copies so you can give all your family. Oh, thank you. And uh, I'm sure you're going to get a lot of calls and emails from your friends to, and when they see your story. And uh, we want to have you back. Like I said, maybe we should have you write a, write a, a story about how to stay healthy at your age. Okay. Because you are definitely a role model. Besides Joan Packer in our magazine, who's older than you, I mean, you guys are role models, and we need to. See, I mean, getting fat, getting Getting older, having health issues is not normal. That's correct. And one of the things we want to try and do is make sure people get the information, um, have some people like yourself to motivate. Mm-hmm. Maybe we should have you talk at our Aging in Place event next year because you were at our Aging in Place, Aging in Place <laughs> event this year, right? That's right. That's how crowded it was. <laughs> yes, it was. But we should have you guys come up and oh, just talk my. about life and how to deal with stress and how to deal with family and remain positive and have fun, you know? Mm-hmm. So important. So thank you so much. You're so welcome. So Lori Bachman on our cover here of the October November issue. It's on our website. Um, and thank you so much, Lori. Well, hopefully we're going to get Faye and Terry on our cover in their coming coming radio show. Um, but thank you so much. It's all out there on, at our YMCA's, the libraries, Big City Diner, you know, all the la- Safeway Longs and Times around your community. Uh, but and by the way, fourteen hundred doctor offices. We, we we're at every doctor office in this state of Hawaii. Uh, don't forget to like our Facebook page, and you can always contact us via email through our magazine, uh, Percy at generations808.com, or you can call or text me at 234 3117. Thank you so much, everybody. As always, uh, aloha and live well.